Hello and welcome everybody. King Demps here. Today we are going to be taking a look at the PGL RMRA. Now, yes, everyone calm down. I realize I'm a little bit late on this one. Not gonna lie, I woke up this morning, right? It's Sunday and I thought to myself, I was planning to record the predictions video today, but I also signed up to cover the start of the RMR Today for HLTV. So I don't know what my brain was doing. Probably a bit bamboozled about an event starting on a Sunday, but fuck all that. Here we are. We're going to do some predictions anyway. Now, obviously, I have seen um, some of the games. I've seen the first round and the second round of games is going on right now. I haven't looked at that, so I'm only I'm only soiled by the first round of games, right? But anyway, let's dig into it. We're gonna go from uh let's go from the top down because I think some of these are easy, right? FaZe, they're gonna qualify, right? No problems, best team in the world right now. Navi, they're gonna qualify. Yes, Navi have their problems at the moment. Um, definitely not looking the Imperious team that they once were. Simple still in fantastic form, but the team overall is suffering and if I'm perfectly honest, I think they look like they are suffering a little bit from a lack of a really good in-game leader. Not that I'm suggesting any roster changes right now, but what I'm saying is Boomich, like, let's all be honest, he's not a real in-game leader, is he? He's there to, like, like wear the armband, as it were, but he's not really the captain and leader in, of that team. Blade is doing all the big boy, big brain thinking behind the scenes, and honestly, in the server, Simple gets to do whatever the hell he wants, so, yeah... But I think you see that Na'Vi lose direction in certain games, and I think they lack a decisive and, and creative voice to kind of get them out of some of these holes that they sometimes get themselves in. They should qualify from this RMR, though. If we look at the bottom half of the RMR, it really is kind of lacking for any, like, truly quality upset teams. So I think Na'Vi will make it through pretty easily. I wouldn't be surprised, however, if they dropped a game and didn't go through with a perfect record. Next up, we are going to be looking at Heroic. Now, Heroic are actually of... I want to say of the top teams, they're the one that I have the least faith in. Um, but actually, I think a qualifier like this, they're probably going to be pretty comfortable when the pressure is off. So actually, I've totally changed my mind from what I just said. Ignore me. Heroic are going to go through, I think, pretty comfortably. Um, yeah, like I say, I think the main problem is, is like... The top sort of like few teams are like pretty stacked. Like assuming you think Vitality are a strong team, which I still kind of reserve judgment on. But I think FaZe, Na'Vi, Heroic, Outsiders are like really strong. And then after that, this RMR starts to look a little thin on the ground for like really quality teams. So Heroic should make it. Outsiders should make it. Vitality should make it. Basically, these top five, I'm, I'm like pretty certain on they're all going to make it. I would be shocked if any of them don't go through. The only one I may reserve a smidge of judgment on is Vitality because I'm not convinced as to how good they are right now. But, like, look at the names. They've got enough to make it through this RMR. So, yeah, top five. They're going to make it through. No nonsense. No stress. Moving on. Fnatic are an interesting one, right? Because, again, you look at the names on paper. Between, like, Mezzi, Poison, and Crims, they should have enough firepower to just frag their way through this RMR without needing to be that good as a team. The problem is, is that Poison does go missing sometimes. Crims, now that he's a little older, again, doesn't always, like, mega frag, even against not-so-great teams. He still has the potential to, don't get me wrong, but he doesn't do it all the time super consistently. So the only name I actually think will consistently frag out is Mezzi. And then uh, suddenly I'm starting to get a little bit worried about Fnatic. I'm actually going to go out on a limb. Hang on, how many how many slots have we got? We got eight. Yeah, yeah okay. Just making sure. I thought we had eight. I just wanted to double check that. I'm actually going to go out on a limb and say Fnatic are not going to qualify. I, I almost don't believe this as I say it, but... I don't want this video to be boring and just go, yep, yeah, these eight will make it, these eight will not. So, bam, I'm going to lock in one. I'm going to lock a spicy one in now. Fnatic, they're gone. And Mouse, actually, I'm going to go for Mouse as well. Now, I've seen Mouse lose their opening game, so you could say this is a bit of a, a cheat, like I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm really, really not convinced by what Mouse are doing with this five-man lineup. You've got four young 
apart from frozen relatively inexperienced guys and you've got one in-game leader who's not got the most tier one experience the tier one experience he does have from last year with mouse was shit they went out first in like every tournament and he's not known as a leadership figure this was a problem with him last year in mouse I think putting four guys who don't have a lot of tier one experience up there with a coach who doesn't have the most experience either as like a tier one player. Like, I think this just looks like a recipe for a team that regardless of the talent on it, it's just not going to perform up to the level that you think. I think they're going to collapse in games. I think they're going to struggle to get themselves out of holes in games. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not convinced by this Mouse five-man roster, and it's really not got anything to do with the skill or, or even the balance of roles per se. I think just a, a vacuum of leadership and experience is really going to hold this Mouse lineup back. So I'm going to say these two, Fnatic and Mouse, are going to be the guys that don't qualify. I'm going to lock OG in. Again, I think a qualifier like this, similar to Heroic, is the kind of environment where OG are going to be comfortable and they've got enough skill and whatever on the roster and experience to just, you know, blaze their way through this qualifier. So basically, what I have to do now is I have to pick out of these teams who I think are going to qualify. I'm going to lock in big, right? Again, I've seen big play their opener and I've seen them win it. So again, you might say, oh, are you cheating? I think a qualifier like this is exactly where Big look their best in this kind of environment, right? It's a qualifier, the pressure's not on. It's on a LAN environment, like but a but a studio LAN, so it's not super big pressure for some of the younger guys. I think this is where Big step their game up a little bit because you could say Big are known to lose to shit teams or Sorry, shit is probably harsh. No one who's made it to this RMR can be called shit, you know. I was going to say, except maybe Quasar, like 150 in the world, came from the Far East qualifier. Don't get that much credit from me for qualifying. But if you've made it to this RMR, you're a decent team, right? What I should say is some of the lower tier teams, right, big are known to, to drop games to. It, it happens all the time. They drop games. But normally, this is in online environments, and qualifiers for like lesser tournaments or even in lesser like tier two events like these these multi vibes blah 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 so i actually think in this environment i'm gonna i'm gonna say bigger one of the teams that make it over Fnatic and miles and then the second one hmm, the second one is tough i don't think dig are gonna do it i gotta be honest i i think this dig lineup is kind of just to hang around in sort of like tier two slash three and like be present and have a name but they're never going to do anything impressive um so yeah i think freiburg is is not great i think you know Halsirk is not a great orpa um maybe forest lecro and heap like that core if you put a couple more interesting players around it actually then i'd, I'd like be yeah okay we're, we're cooking with some gas here but yeah with freiburg and Halsirk on the lineup not super impressive i would say eternal fire but I think I'm being put off. Okay, so it, in isolation, I would look at Forza and Eternal Fire as very legitimate upset potential teams. I'm going to say the problem with Eternal Fire is they're going to rely too much on their aim and their skill because they outskill a lot of Tier 2, Tier 3 teams, and it's not going to work here. And you're going to have to probably beat like one of these decent teams. And you're not going to do it just playing loose, playing off of skill playing off of Zantares and Woxic fragging out. It's just not going to work. So I'm going to get rid of... I'm actually going to say Forza. Now, this might be a little controversial because we kind of saw them get spanked a little bit by Heroic in their opener. But I think Jerry is a really good in-game leader. I think he's brought up a lot of decent talent through the CIS scene. Obviously, Flit came through the previous Forza iteration and is now doing well on Outsiders. And Zorta is legit. Zorta is a very, very good player. And you will see Zorta probably on one of the top CIS names in the future. Think like a Na'Vi, uh, Outsiders, or a VP, or a Gambit. I think he will be on like a top CIS team in, in maybe a year or two. And then outside of that, they found a lot of decent young talent. Shalfi, Kenzie, and Norwe all actually look like pretty promising young talents out of that cis region i'm gonna say forza are gonna be the other team to go through ahead of miles and fanatic so what does that put as my so it puts these four 
Vitality OG, Forza and Big. Those are the teams I'm I'm gonna say are going through. Again, it looks a little bit lazy because I've basically taken out two and then just put the two next highest ranked in, but I think it makes sense. I think there's reasonable arguments. Outside of that, I think Saw, Quasar, and Unique, I don't think are going to get anywhere near. I think they're going to get banged out by most of the teams they play. Gamer Legion are really inconsistent, even at that Tier 2, Tier 3 level. They look like one of the better teams there, but like they're prone to just kind of losing series against not-so-great teams. So I don't have a lot of faith in Gamer Legion. Dignitas are, are one that you would automatically lean towards and look at as an upset team, but I, I think because of the names behind them, not because they're actually that great. And Eternal Fire, maybe they can take like an upset best of one off of somebody if they come in hot and they bang them out. Yes, but I, I just don't think they're going to have the consistency with the way that they play across you know, the whole qualifier to make it through. You have to win a decent... You have to win two best of ones and a best of three. And if you you're going to play some decent teams just because it's Swiss. You can't really get through without at least playing one decent team. So, yeah, I just don't think it's going to happen for Eternal Fire. So, that is my predictions. Bam! Locking them in. Let me know, guys, down in the comments if you agree, disagree, and I will do another video like this for the RMRB before, before that one starts. This one, I'll get in before it starts. You know the drill. Like it. Comment. They say hit the bell as well to get notifications. I don't know about you guys, but I just go and find my favorite YouTubers and watch them anyway. So, like, fuck it. If you don't want to do it, don't. Uh, and remember, if you didn't like this video, you're probably, you know, one of the teams I call shit. And I'm sorry. That was unfair. In all fairness, probably a bit harsh.